So welcome to the Demography Today uh, lecture series, sponsored by the BBVA Foundation, uh, the Horizon 2020 Lompoc Project, and the Spanish National Research Council. And we have the pleasure to have uh, Jean Piero Dalaswana, a professor of demography from the Department of Statistical Science at the University of Padova in, in Italy. Uh, uh, Jean Piero, after his uh, PhD in demography at the University of uh, Florence in 1990, he worked at the universities of Rome and Messina, and he has been a full professor at the University of Padova since uh, 2007. He has spent research periods in Tokyo, Moscow, Canberra, and Melbourne. And during 2008-2012, uh, he was associate editor of the European Journal of uh, Population. He is now on the scientific board of the Gender and Generations uh, Survey Project. In 2005-2009, uh, he coordinated Itagen 2, the first Italian survey on second generation immigrants. And recently, he wrote the article Migration Italian Style, 1977-2018, uh, uh, with uh, Polom, uh, Colombo, published, that is going to be published in the Population and, and Development Review, one of the best journals in the field. In 2007-2008 and 2011-2013, he was official consultant of demography for the Italian Ministry for Family Policies. In this position, he represented Italy on the European Commission for Demographic Issues in Brussels. And during the uh, five years from uh, March 2013 uh, to March two uh, 2018, he was member of the Republican Senate in Italy. So it's a great pleasure to have you here. And uh, as usual, we have between uh, 45 minutes to one hour for your talk, and then we open the proper question. This is Migration Italian Style. Uh, the title is not of mine, but uh, I think it's a good title, because uh, the idea of this presentation is that there are some specificities in uh, migrations uh, in Italy, and not also in Italy, but mainly in the Mediterranean European countries. And uh, uh, the idea is uh, to try to explain which kind of uh, peculiarities are. Uh, the summary of my presentation is this. What about migration in Europe and Italy during the last uh, 40 years? Uh, looking at these trends, uh, we, uh, we make four questions coming from the analysis of these trends. Then there is the analysis of data, and then we try to answer to these four questions. Uh, first of all, you can see there are, uh, look at the net migration rate in some developed areas from 1950 to 2015. The first uh, interesting thing is that uh, you see clearly a growing trend. Okay? If you look, these are the more developed countries, you see that the trend is growing, generally speaking. Then from the, 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 the last uh, years of the, the first years of the post-war uh, uh, post period, Europe uh, became a, uh, immigration, a immigration country, and not an immigration country like it was uh, in, the previous, in the previous year of the, of the centuries, and, uh, previous centuries and the previous years of the 20th century. But there are very strong differences uh, between Italy and the Southern European, Southern Europe, excluding Balkans, you see. And they become, uh, the net migration rate become positive, not from 1950, but from 1955, uh, 75, excuse me, okay, this year. Whereas uh, in the Western Europe, it was positive, and also strongly positive, during the first, uh, uh, from 1950s to 1970s. Then uh, you have, uh, yeah, there is the, the, uh, the crisis uh, of uh, the, the half of the 70s, then also migration is uh, flat, huh? okay? But then you have an increase, and in Italy and Southern Europe, you have a sort of immigration boom uh, in the first year of the, uh, the next, uh, of the next, of this century in Spain, and eight per thousand, like in Southern Europe, and uh, five, six per thousand is a very high level of net migration rate, if you remember that, to have an example, it's similar 
8 to the birth rate. Then it's very high level of immigration, of migration. Then here there is the crisis, okay, the crisis of 2008. And then in Southern Europe, in Spain, in Italy, in Greece, and so on, there is a strong decrease of uh, net migration rate that become against negative during the last, uh, the last years. In Italy, it becomes not negative, but it's very, it's very lower than before. Then, if you look at Italy, if you look at net migration rate per thousand, some European countries, to look at Italy and Spain, you see that uh, starting from 1975, you see that in Spain is strongly positive during the first years of the century. It's the same in Italy, also, even if in Spain it's stronger, okay? Whereas it becomes negative in Spain and very lower in Italy. Then. Uh, now look at Italy, total and abroad net migration rate, because if uh, dividing Italy in two, in, in two uh, groups, uh, in two territories, Center North and South Island. In Italy, it is absolutely fundamental for understanding something about migration to consider separately the Center Northern region and the Southern region. As you see, in the total okay, net migration rate is a red line, eh? and the uh, uh, abroad migration rate in the Center North, the total uh, net migration rate is higher than the abroad. In the southern part is the contrary. It means that in the, south, the people coming from the south, they go to the north. Okay, this is this. And the trend is similar, but the level is very different. In center north, we have very high level of immigration during the first part of the 20th century. In South Island, we have a positive immigration balance but is very lower if you compare, you see it is five and 14. Then it means that the northern part of Italy was more, more attractive for immigrants than the southern part. If you looked at international migration, now it's not, uh, uh, we speak about thousand, okay? You see that in Central North we have very high level of immigration and very low level of emigration. But after it's the same in the south, but the number are very lower. What interesting to say that during the last period, we had an inversion of the, um, of the trends. And now, in the present here, we have a near, and the balance is more and more lower than in the past. Then it means that Italy now is very, very less attractive for immigrants than uh, some, uh, some few years before. Then we have four questions, four general questions. The first one is why immigration boom in Italy and the other European Mediterranean countries during 1998, 2008? Why not before or after? Second, why immigration bust during the following 10 years? Three. Are there specificity for Italian and Southern Europe immigration? Four, how did policies influence immigration in Italy? Then we had four questions that come from the trends we have already described and we try to answer. Then, the relationship between Italy and migrations during the last 40 years was shaped by five general factors. One, change in the economy and the labor market, demographic shifts, internal territorial imbalances, the strong family structure of the Italian society, and regulatory shortcomings. We take into account change in the economy and the labor market. It means the lack of manual workers during the first 10 years of the century and the following economic crisis. Demographic shifts, the shortage of low educated, educated Italian young people, and the abundance of the educated, educated young people, and the historical territorial dualism, north, rich, rich and forerunner, 
versus south, poor and backward. Now it's a bit complex figure, but we try to see. The uh, green line is the turnover, uh, the turnover ratio. It's the ratio between population that enter in the labor market, potentially entering the labor market, and the people at age uh, 55, 64, that is a population that ex uh, going out from the labor market. If this ratio is one, is uh, 100, okay, is one, it means that there is one people entering for each people that go out from the labor market, okay? Then it means that there is a sort of uh, equilibrium in the labor market. Huh? You see that uh, in the north, center north of Italy, this ratio was positive until 1995. Then it became negative, negative, then less than one, not positive, excuse me. It was higher than 100. Huh? Then it became less. And now, today, it means there are only 70 young people entering the labor market, each 100 people that go for retirement, okay? Then the question is why Italian young people do not receive a lot of pressure to enter in the job? Hmm? The problem, and I will answer after, but before we see the other two uh, indicators of this figure, net migration rate, it's uh, the same of the figure we saw before, and you see that it is very low here, and then it's very high during the first part of the century, and uh, the unemployment. And you see there is a specular, specular uh, um, trend, specular shape of unemployment and uh, the uh, uh, migration, net migration. It means when unemployment is low, here unemployment in the 2007, before the crisis, was 4% was very low level of unemployment. And in this period, I, we had the higher, the higher uh, uh, net migration rate. But in the south, it was similar shape, but very, very, but different. To have an example, the uh, uh, turnover rate becomes uh, uh, lower than 100 only in 2011. It means, uh, uh, 15, 20 years after that in the north. It means that, to have an example, in the, during the 80s, we have uh, 180 young people that want to enter the labor market for each uh, 100 people that go out from the labor market. Then, not, at, not a attraction, okay? And here is the unemployment that is very, very higher than in the north. You see that in the year when we are at the lowest level of unemployment, is, uh, that is 12%, uh, it is in the 2007. It's, uh, this uh, level 12 is, uh, excuse me, is, uh, uh, 12 is higher than the higher level of unemployment in the north then it means very completely different uh, situation. Uh, then, the problem is that uh, the labor market, uh, yes, labor market is not uh, a, like uh, a bottle where you put the water inside, outside, and so on. It's uh, a segmented labor, labor mar segmented market. And uh, here we can see that uh, the labor market turnover it's completely different if you look at graduates or non-graduates. If you look at graduates, we are, what is the north? No, Italy. Graduates, the labor, the, uh, not the ratio, but the difference between graduates that are 20, 24, and 60, 64. I divide for five to make a sort of a generation, uh, okay, for one, for one cohort. 
you see that there is a, a very, very high level here. It means that, uh, to have an example, in 1991, we have more than 2,000, 200,000 uh, graduated people, more than the graduated that go out from the labor market. And it's completely different if you look at the non-graduates. It's the opposite. In 2001, we had a very, very sh strong shortage of, uh, uh, of uh, under non-graduate people. And uh, if you look at population as a whole, there is not problem. But this is completely different. Then, if you look at this figure, it's a net migration and the turnover of non-graduates. This is the turnover of non-graduates. And this is the uh, net migration. The net migration is uh, compensate the level of non-graduate. It means that uh, the, uh, mm, yes, the net migration uh, permit to the uh, non-graduate labor market to have not a shortage. If you look at this, we miss this because it's a bit long. If you look at the north part, center north part of Italy, and you see the proportion of foreigners by job in the center north and south islands. In the center north, the, if you look only at unskilled workers, you see that in 2000, and uh, you can see now, we had 40% of people, of workers, that are foreigners. 40% of, it is interesting because in the uh, 40 years ago, this uh, number was zero. <laughs> you see, that was changed. And I, 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 I think that also in Spain happened something similar. There was a completely uh, a replacement of, a, not completely replacement, but if you look at upper class, only super 2% are foreigners. <laughs> if you look at unskilled workers, 40% are foreigners. It means that we are speaking about this. Now we can, uh, it, it comes from my old job about uh, migration in general in Italy and Europe. And uh, it's good also for explaining what is happening now in Italy. Uh, we read uh, uh, rapidly. Uh, with a surge in development, couples who limit fertility can guarantee greater human capital and more opportunities for rising social mobility to their few children who are already born. Then these educated children refuse poorly paid jobs which provide little human capital. As a result, there is a lack of people available for these types of jobs. New immigrants take the place of the unborn children, assuming the more poorly paid and less prestigious jobs and refilling the lower ranks of the social structure. The immigrants assimilate very quickly to the social behavior of the residents, lowering their fertility and investing in the human capital for their children. They are increasing their chance for rising social mobility. Then, in the new generation, the educated children of the immigrants refuse the poorly paid work of their parents, causing a new shortage of unskilled labor. Thus, the, the cycle repeats itself, and you come again to number three. This happened in Italy. To have an example, in the census of uh, uh, 1881 in Milan, uh, they discovered that all of alpha population of Milan was not born in Milan. Huh? They came from the valley, they came from the country. Then people came from Veneto, then people came from the southern part of Italy, and now they came from abroad. And the people that came from the, from the villages of the Lombardy made the children to the school, they studied, they lowered fertility, they, and they, after studying they go to, to, to uh, they try to avoid the job of their, their parents, and then there are new immigrants, and so on, and so on. This is what happened. We had uh, 
uh, in a, 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 a thesis, in a master thesis, we apply this model to United States, it's exactly the same, and also in Germany. Eh? There is the idea that migration is unskilled migration, and uh, that is the consequence of the fertility decline, and so on. But, uh, now look at some Italian Mediterranean Europe specificities. Eh? The first uh, very important specificity is the regular domestic workers that uh, a lot of these immigrants work in the houses. You see, this is, uh, these data are only regular domestic workers. The expert of this topic say that there are about 50% uh, more that are not uh, regular. Hmm? And you see that uh, in uh, now, eh, we have uh, about uh, 800,000 foreigners that work in our houses. Eh? There are also Italians, but there are more and more foreigners. If you look at uh, the beginning of the uh, 90s, it was practically zero, you see? And uh, uh, if you look at what will happen in Italy, now, in Italy, there are uh, 12 million of people aged 65 more, but uh, in 2041, there will be 20 people aged 65 and more. Eh? It means that uh, if uh, this model hmm, of uh, people working in the houses, it means that uh, there will be an attraction, a strong attraction for the future for these workers. And it's interesting to say that this kind of uh, people working uh, in the houses, uh, caregivers in the houses, are very typical of Mediterranean countries, of Italy, Spain, Greece, and Portugal. If we look at uh, uh, the Netherlands, in England, or in, in France, there are very, very few. There are many foreigners working in the institutions for old people, but very few working in the houses. This is one of the it, mm, uh, characteristics of immigration. And uh, why is it possible to add this kind? Of, because in Italy, and I think also in Spain, people like to stay at home. They do not want to go to institution. You know, Italy is, uh, in Europe, the uh, countries with the lower level of people, the lower proportion of all people in institution. If, uh, if I, I compare Italy with the Netherlands, for people aged 85 and more, and the three times more, of, of course, after comparing for population, in the Netherlands stay in institution. Italians go to institution only when they are very, very strongly ill. I think it's the same in Spain. Okay, but why is it possible to have this kind of model in it? It's not only a cultural model. There is also a practical model. Uh, I, I show you this, uh, fi this uh, figure. This is the distance from the closest ascendant, parent or parent-in-law, by uh, uh, education and citizenship. Women with a child aged 0 2 living in Padova and its interland. What's the meaning of this? It means that if, now, we are speaking about today, not about uh, 100 ago. Hmm? Today, there are 60% of young couples that live one kilometer or less far from their parent or their parent-in-law. Then, with this end, if we look at uh, this, uh, if, if you look at, at Italian people uh, for uh, level, for educational level, you see that there are no differences. It means it's not a residual of the past, because also people with degree try to live near their parents or their parents-in-law. And uh, if uh, I live near my parents and my parents become old, I can manage for putting a uh, uh, caregiver at home and I can control it. Also, if my mother had not had problem of in the, at, with its head and so on. This was happening in Italy. If you look at the contract 
that are with the, the four uh, the caregivers, we see that the most of contra is not with the old people, but with the sons or the, with the daughters of the old people. Then it means that this kind of structure is, uh, we speak about of the clusters of families in Italy. There are clusters uh, with the parents, the mother, and the, the daughters and the sons living nearby. And uh, if you look at Spain, it's practically the same. People try to live near, is it possible? And this is the Mediterranean family. Then from the Mediterranean family, is studied also for, by David Rare, this topic, so you know. And this Mediterranean family is as shaped also migration. Because it's not possible to have all these people living in the, coming from abroad, from Romania, from Moldova, and so on, and, or from Latin America, and living in our houses without this kind of structure of family. Then, uh, uh, another thing typical of Italy is that the proportion of people living in the, uh, is that, excuse me, the foreigners are very widespread in the territory. They are not concentrated in the towns or in the cities. To have an example, if, if we compare North Central Italy and uh, London, you see that uh, in uh, North Central, in the one, two, three, four, five, six, in these uh, six uh, uh, cities of North Central Italy, lives 11% uh, of total population of North, North Central Italy, and only 15% of foreigners. In London, lives 14% of people of the uh, United Kingdom, but 35% of foreigners. It means that in London, there is a very strong concentration of foreigners, whereas in North Central Italy, there is not a so strong concentration. Why is this? Because in Italy, a lot of foreigners live in little villages. The, that one that live in the families, but also the town that works in the factories. In Italy, the most of factories are little factories, very little enterprise. Then they, little with uh, 10, uh, 12, uh, 10, 20, 30 uh, people working uh, as uh, 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 manual workers. And then, if, if you look at the geography of migration in Italy, you see that there is not a concentration in the big, uh, in the big, uh, big. Uh, big, Rome and Milan are big uh, enough in, uh, in European, uh, uh, not in the Chinese, but in European uh, uh, measure, we can consider a big town. Okay, and uh, now there is uh, the effect of the uh, post-2008 crisis. The crisis, uh, no, mm, uh, before I, I show you this one, what happened with the, with, the, with the crisis? With crisis, there was an increase of unemployment rate and a decrease of employment, employment rate. What, uh, but the, it was, the crisis was more dramatic for foreigners. You see, this is foreigner, the unemployment rate of foreigners in the south and foreigners in the north. You see that the unemployment rate was 6% before the crisis and in 2013, in the, in the worst year, it was 16%, very, very high level. And unemployment for foreigners is dramatic because they have not a family. You see the, what was here. You see that only very few of the foreigners had the, a parents living nearby. Huh? They are alone. They are not the network that can help you if uh, you are unemployed. And there is also a legal problem. If uh, you lose a job for the Italian legislation, you cannot get the permesso di soggiorno, what is? The permit to stay. And the permit of staying, okay? Then uh, there is a problem of having the possibility of staying. But for many of them, it's also a problem. They have not the possibility to go to return back 
and it's dramatic. Then it, the, cri the crisis was very hard, mainly for uh, people, uh, for foreigners people. You see that for Italians, mainly in the north, the unemployment level did not change during the crisis. In the south, it uh, was higher, but also for them. It means that uh, all the effect from the working viewpoint of the crisis for, from the unemployment rate was mainly concentrated in male, in male uh, foreigners. Eh? It, it explains why Italy is less attractive now. Because there is a foreigners that are, have not a job, then it's difficult to think that the new foreigners enter for trying to have a job. If also, that one that are here from many, many years uh, don't find anything to do. And uh, it means that what happened? And uh, the uh, proportion of families in absolute poverty by citizenship is dram dramatically high for foreigners. You see that for Italian, for families composed only by Italian people, the level of poverty in center north was 3%. We speak about absolute poverty. Absolute poverty means uh, that you have not money enough to buy something to heat, to, uh, to heat, to heat, yes, the houses and the home. Mm? And it's only 3% in center north for Italia only, but it is 25% for foreigners. If you look at South Islands, it's 9% for Italian, at 42% for foreigners, it's dramatic. Eh? And uh, uh, also for mixed uh, couples, uh, I have not data for um, Central North and South, but for Italy, you are in the middle, you see. Then it means that uh, the cr crisis were dramatic mainly for uh, foreigners. Why it happened so? Because uh, Crisis was particularly strong, mainly in the sector of the economy where foreigners worked in the same in Spain. It was mainly in building sector. Building sector was destroyed in Italy by the crisis. Perhaps it was, uh, there was a, a sort of bubble before the crisis, but after there was, uh, we lost more than half a million of uh, uh, jobs in uh, building sector. And uh, many of them were foreigners, and they lost everything. OK, then the last point are regularity shortcomings. This, uh, in this uh, uh, graphic, you see estimation of irregular foreigners living in Italy in thousand. It means, uh, in Italian, we say Montagne Russe. It's the same, eh? Russian mountains, you see? Eh? What is this? It, it was that the, uh, um, it, these are estimations made uh, using uh, uh, snowball uh, samples. Huh? They try to make the number of foreigners asking people, do you know uh, for, uh, your friend that, uh, and so on. Huh? And then uh, there is ISMU uh, Foundation that uh, from uh, 1992 try to estimate the number of uh, irregular, irregular foreigners living in Italy. As you can see, it depends on the uh, uh, sanitary hmm? from the uh, amnesties. Yes, okay. Uh, this is the total number of regularized foreigners in Italy huh? in uh, this uh, period. And you see that the total number is two million of people that were regularized. And uh, if you look at uh, here, I, I put in red Italy and Spain, is regularized foreigners per 100,000 residents at the beginning of the 10 year period. And total number of regularized. Eh? You see that Italy and Spain are very similar. We are very high number, that's similar also to Greece. Whereas in the United Kingdom, in Belgium, but also in the Netherlands and uh, in, uh, in Germany, there are very few uh, regularized people. 
and these different traps, uh, we have to, not traps, we have to seriously think uh, what is wrong in our mechanism. Because now the mechanism is this one. Hmm? Legal entry, more or less, into Italy. Eh? Loss of legal status. Hmm? Amnesty for those who could show that they had a job. Integration process with 10 years for citizenship. A path that was not free of risk of su or suffering, but did favor migration largely regulated by the matching of labor supply and demand. It is a, a paradox that in a country like Italy, where the, 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 uh, the, the policy was not able to regulate migration, migration was regulated by labor supply and demand. Yes. That's so. And uh, uh, also because there were in Italy very few expelled migrants. Uh, we read this because it's very instructive. Expelled illegal immigrants were, in fact, far fewer in number than those regularized. The quota of foreigners really expelled after having been intercepted has illegal by the policies fluctuated 10% in the 90s, then grew with the reform of 1998, reaching around 30-40% with the highest values in 2003, right after the new amnesty that followed the Bossifini law, that is also now, when just under half of the intercepted illegal immigrants were expelled. But from that year on, the quota steadily fell, and in 2010, it was just over 26. In the first seven months of 2016, the quota of the expelled immigrants on the total of those intercepted was 25%, lower than 20 in 2017 and 2018. It's a, a tragedy. You, you, you found one, you found five, and only one is effectively expelled. To the other, they say, ay, 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 I found you, and go, and don't, uh, and go away, people go out from the policy, uh, yes, from the uh, police uh, uh, central, and uh, boom, they, they stay here, and they work, and they do what you like, okay? Then uh, we can make our four answer to our question. First, why immigration boom in Italy and in the other European Mediterranean countries during 1998-2008, why not before or after? The answer is shortage of DDD workers, where DDD is, what is, uh, dirty, uh, dangerous, and uh, demanding. Hmm? Demanding means uh, few, uh, what is, uh, um, eh? in Italiano, eh? Uh, mm, poco demeaning 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 okay why immigration busted during the last 10 years economic crisis mainly in building sector and manufacturing are there any specificity in Italian and southern Europe immigration the strong family ties and mainly in the northeast and central Italy the widespread of factories all around the country and four, how did policies influence immigration in Italy very weakly, favoring the demand supply job matching? And then finally, eh, this is Al Paese of today. Eh, and Los Europeos timing mass una crisis migratoria que una segunda recesión. Eh, this is all another chapter. All another chapter, but uh, that's uh, why it's important to continue to study migration and to try to understand what is really back of migration. And uh, I show you this last uh, fig uh, this last graphic. This is unemployment rate in the black one, and uh, the red line is a proportion of uh, people in the survey 
that saying, in Italy, there are too many immigrants. You see that it's completely the same, exactly the same shape of the graphic. It means that uh, uh, you can think to these results. Uh, it's very interesting. And it means that uh, people uh, perceive uh, that migration is not... Uh, a automatic things, but it's strongly, strongly related to what happened in the market job. Thank you very much. <laughs>